And good morning, everyone. Got, uh, see, I'm watching Museum on the other, other screen there. Museum is just incredible at this stuff. Oh, and I forgot the network bits. go dropping it. Oh, yeah. There we go. And how is everyone today? We should get this going soon. But first, another corny joke. What do you get when a corn cob is run over by a truck? Creamed corn. See, that, that one's, eh. I don't know, that one's only so good. See, this one's much better. Why did the ghost ride the elevator? To lift his spirits. <laughs> that one is so much better. Oh, that is so much better. All right, so we're gonna get going. In just a moment. Oh, I forgot to turn the uh, automatic scene switcher back on. There we go. 
There we go. Let's get through this. I want to get back to the game server. And I think this is, uh, it's been fun. We only have a couple more things left. Not sure about the flush yet. Receive, I think we're just about done with. Here's receive. Was that last song more than five minutes? Pretzel just woke up. I think we should probably have some sort of type for that instead of the little tuple there. Let's fix that real quick. Call that though, would this be like a stream info, stream plus info, stream an ID? ID and stream. What do we use it for? We are using this for. Inside of the dash map that has a channel ID. And it's got this thing here. We need, we need some sort of type alias for this. Let's name that. No, we should do first. I'll get status. updated out there.
That's probably okay. All right. Just gonna go top bottom in this again. So constructor, got a new. Okay, critters. Do we even have a slab anymore? Is that our sinks? For the dash map, we've got a slab here. Add channel. This changed yesterday. Instead of actually pulling up the channel out of the dash map and tossing something into it, we're using a um, an async channel to actually pass it information. Hey, good morning, cat peasant. How are you? Billiar, good morning. I'm Patatas del Papa. Happy Tuesday. Well, I actually had a decent joke earlier. Why the ghost ride the elevator? To lift his spirits. I like that one. That one's not so bad. Journey in AI. Are you an AI? How would you know if you were an AI? I thought this was add stream, not add channel. Okay, so if we're adding this, let's toss a couple more comments on here. Reduce that to two lines. That's fine. Whether or not we have a channel, just checking the dash map. Remove channel. This one is is going to be a little bit of a thorn. If people end up using this thing for, let's say, a channel becomes an island, right? Absolutely possible. And so when you go into an island, you just start interacting with the other elements on the island, and you know it becomes fairly simple to be able to send messages back and forth to this channel. Right now, I'm I'm actually using a channel for like the entire game itself. Right. You go through authentication, that's a channel. You go to character selection, that's the second channel. You go to another channel, which would be the game itself. Um, but if that got subdivided into, let's say, areas, then you would want to be able to add and to remove channels. So be on the lookout in here for cases where there's a stream on its way to a channel that is being removed. So I think that's actually going to be possible in here. And I'm not sure what to do with it. Because if somebody's logging in and they're, for whatever reason, they end up in a situation or the consumer of this library is trying to insert them 
into a channel that is being removed. How do we actually handle that? Do we end up with some sort of counter? We need we need something that says like uh, maybe like uh, occupancy or something like that. Because uh, when you get added to a channel, it doesn't happen immediately. So be on the lookout for that. That and I've got a little fix me in there. What do we do with, with everybody that's currently in the ch in the channel? All right, here's for send. Receiving data, some stream IDs, building a whole bunch of features unordered. We get the sync, which is basically that that channel. No, 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 those are the syncs. That's the, uh, the sync half, because we split the streams. On the data, good. What did I do? We were in send. The sync block is returned, and that's the volume. Good. We match the sync. If it's something or nothing, if it's nothing, we give an error. If it is something, We have to do a stream.lock on it. We await for that. Send and await. And then map the method returns. <laughs> How's it going, Exxon Dev? Seems okay to me. Then we futures collect a weight on everything. All right, now for ad stream. So this is what I was thinking we were looking at earlier. Now in this case, check that the channel exists. Split the stream. Add the stream to the slab. Well, add the. That's not happening, and this here, we just add it to the channel. There we go. This is unused. I know that. Just ignore it for now. Oh, let's implement this real quick. It should be a a little bit of a gimme. So if we want to change this stream ID to this other channel, what do we do? Did we have the controllers in here? Oh, those are in are in the channels. So much for a gimme. Those are actually in the channels. No. Do we actually have to, we have to know which channel 
the stream is in to be able to drop it from it. Did I say that right? Which channel the stream is in to be able to drop to drop and or move it? Okay. So we have to bump that up here. We could store it in this lab. You had to keep two in for a similar reason. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be a big piece of data. And I'm hoping lookup in this lab is actually very performant. All right, where do we add those? So if we go back down to add stream, split it, insert the one half, and then the other half, the read half, goes into this channel bit, but we don't get notified. Bum, bum, bum. Since every operation is its own channel, that means each gets its own set of types. In, in some cases, it is. Yeah, I'm, tr I'm trying not to look into what, what's being sent back and forth outside, like, uh, in these streams. But for our little bit of internal communication, we do uh, communicate with channels, or at least to to pass um, pass some of these around. And the other nice thing about the channels is that if I'm trying to kind of work the interior machinery on this, um, I don't have to have something driving it that lives inside of it, um, like like a runtime. I can just rely on a runtime on the outside pulling this thing drive its internal machinery. See, ideally, we would get this here. Maybe we have to wrap it in this control structure before we put it into the channel change. Before we put it into the channel. Ooh, that might work. Let's go look at that for a moment. What do we do in channel for this? Side of channel, we've got our stream futures, which is our futures unordered. And we've got our controls. I'm thinking of bumping that out. All right, let's just do it. Stream dropper out of there into that group.
Toss that in there, sort it. How's the audio today, is it? No, I, I just started to speak louder there, but in general, how was it? Audio balance, okay. Now in this, I want this piece out of there. Great, thank you. Mismatch types, interesting. Probably still has the dropper up there. Now when we add a stream, or is it down here, add stream, before we send that into that channel, we'll wrap that and keep control of it. Is it called ST in this case? And we might still have a channel change TX in there. All right, let's go look at stream controls up at the top. Is it really still? That is a hash map, good. I'm back in channel here. Now it's saying that this is supposed to be a split stream T here, but it doesn't actually think that I can convert that in the future. Let's see. Mismatch types. Ah, it's expecting a stream dropper. Let's go into our stream futures here. Remove that. And this channel change TX, I think is going away. used in the constructor now. Oh, I like that it's simplifying that piece of it. Don't like that it's actually complicating multiplexer. All right, yes. Channel bits. Clean that up a touch. Ad hoc, morning. How many subs do I have currently?
Yeah, are you thinking about uh, making a like a business out of this? Because I think we should talk about like really more along the lines of what your goals are. Because. Yeah, so so currently I I have 10 subs. 10 subs. Yeah. And I, I really don't mind being kind of open about that. Um because if if people are getting into kind of programming streaming in order to like support their lifestyle, I don't think it's going to work much. I think it's very very encouraging um when people do subscribe. So, I mean, I, I've been programming on this stream for over 900 hours, um, and I am not looking into, like, I didn't start streaming on this in order to make an income. I imagine that people like Lana, um, who stream every day for a very long time on the stream, they, they, she has sponsors and other stuff like that. So I imagine, like, doing sort of lifestyle supporting things. Um, you know, I actually have to do a lot more. But in terms of of doing this, for me, this is a this has been more of an adventure to learn Rust. And um, from what we've seen with other sort of game devs that do stream the development of their game, um, like Dev Spajus, um Goodness, he, he's spent a lot of time. He actually does, I think, the majority of his uh, game dev on here now. And he has said that um, doing the streaming does not help your game launch. So, so that's on there. Um, so even if you're, you're doing something to build a product or something like that, you, you're probably not getting people that are interested in your product, but more in... The how-to. So, I don't know. I, I guess it just depends on what your goals are. A little income, yeah. I mean, I'm... At some point, like right now, um, I every, every day after the stream, I will go and have coffee, right? I don't actually leave to go have coffee. I'll go sit down with my wife and we'll have some coffee. And... Uh, currently, <laughs> my, my coffee subscription is is um, kind of like 50 bucks a month. And I thought, you know, like someday I'll be doing this long enough for the stream to buy my coffee every day. And I, I actually think about that. Like, like I, that's not like my goal, but it's just to kind of like put it in perspective. Right. I find the subs super encouraging. But I don't think that it would ever be kind of like a, a, a bit of, you know, like what I could actually live off of. So. The game itself, you never know. Right? Games either make it or they don't. Ah, here it is. Process stream output. Yeah, subsidized caffeine. I like, like if I got to that point where, see, right now, I think it's actually like covering my coffee, but not yet my wife's coffee. Um, so, or the other way around. I mean, it's much more likely that you now it's covering her coffee and not mine yet. So, oh, what is my favorite pro programming language? Well, it used to be, used to be C, right? And I, I have to say, I love C. Um, I also really like Erlang. Erlang is, is a great language. Sorry, maybe, maybe, but I'm a little hesitant to say that. I love the setup that Erlang has. 
right, with a beam um, virtual machine and all that, the way they do garbage collection on every single stack, and it's just, it's, it's awesome. That might make programming uh, streams more viable. You know, it might. Yeah, I, when you look at the number of, like the amount of viewership in science and tech compared to like the rest of Twitch, it's kind of a rounding error, right? So something dramatic is going to need to change for, um, for programming to, to really take off. It works more in hardware, yeah. I mean, just to play around with that just for a minute. Log in with my mule. All right, first, first thing that gets shown to me is this Ruben Durand Music and Performing Arts with three and a half thousand viewers. Now, if we go to browse, Science and Tech currently has 1.8 thousand viewers. <laughs> Like as an entire category, right? People crinkling plastic. <laughs> uh, get more viewership, which you know is just how the world is at the moment. And that's fine. And part of the reason I don't have a camera is, is really because I don't have any like really low cut shirts. So, I'm sorry, I thought. <laughs> All right. <laughs> ASMR and Rust, yes. Oh, that needs to be a split stream. Yes. Of T. Okay, that's more like it. Mismatch types on this too. Hmm. Oh, well, thank you, Actendev. Yeah, I'm also really glad that they added that ability where you could, um, we could do that. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Here for the rest, you stay for the jokes. Oh, wow, this is a long one. A snail, who was tired of being slow, went and bought a sports car with a big S painted on each side. Whenever somebody saw him zooming past, they would say, Hey, look at that S car go. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> look at that S car go. Uh, you get it? S car go. It's like the dish. Cook snails. All right, futures split split stream. Expected T. Does it think that it's actually getting that out? Oh, is this for the ad or for the? Let's delete half of it and see if the error changes. Okay, so it's for this side. Errors in in uh, in this macro are just they're brutal. 
<laughs> Ad hoc, thank you for the follow. Yeah, I've been trying to think, like, maybe once the game's out there, um, there's room for some sort of synergy between the game and the game development to kind of bring more people into it. All right, so process stream output. Ah, oh, yes. I think previously I didn't go far enough down. I was looking at the wrong thing. Yeah, I'm having the same thoughts as well. Yeah, I was looking the other day at um, at uh, one of the Godot APIs. So I want their docs. Here, let's go to thread safe bits here. I think they have a GD native video something. Let's just search for video then. Video player. Because they support two things, WebM and the Theora. But they also have this video stream GD native. So you can implement this and basically have the codec or whatnot on the other side, and basically drive some sort of video control via GD native. Which seems pretty cool. That means that you could use like HLS or whatever you want. So um, that might be something worth worth doing someday. Tossing in a little video thing in there. All right, that seems good. Streamed out ID in this case. There's no ID on that. Of course, there's no ID on that. Do you not know what your own idea is? No, you don't. And we got rid of MX stream, which would have had it. my dog all right do we actually need MX stream back it feels like we need that back Basically, we need the stream to know what it is so that it can actually swap. Well, it, it needs to be able to emit some sort of identifier so that when the data does come out, it's basically tagged with the, its own ID. It says, this ID came from the stream. I wonder if we can just use that internally. Process add stream, okay. Because we could wrap it here. The problem is when it comes 
Oh, it's when it gets dropped, it's that other type. Well, that's a bummer. All right, let's see if we can uh, resurrect that thing. Hit log. <laughs> Removing old code. There's channel. Ah, here it is. Actually, there's a way to do this in um, in Git, isn't there? Because this this file existed at this point in history. Git checkout. Now we could give it the the hash, or oh, you know, what? I'm not going to do that right now. Oh, and what's with all the yellow? There we go. Good. Toss that in there. The multiplexer? Uh, I am using Tmox, if you're asking about the, the terminal multiplexer. If you're asking about the actual multiplexer we're, we're building, it's for streams. Like uh, TCP streams. So you can combine um, that sort of, basically the uh, the output data of a TCP stream into a, a, in, into smaller channels, basically. By grouping different categories of streams into what I'm calling, um, well, let's keep calling them categories. By putting them into a different category, um, you can pull data out of that category and have back pressure with that category. So if in a game server, for example, you have a bunch of users playing on a certain space, that might be in a category and you might have a certain amount of back pressure in that category, but it doesn't affect the rest of the game server because it's separated. So it's like using a, a KQ or ePoll based on um, certain sets of file descriptors. Man, I, I feel like I'm a little slower today. I'm extreme. goes <laughs> trying to get in my... man I slept well last night oh good question uh draw on to this uh, for the stream I only well 
you'll see occasionally we'll go into Godot, sometimes we'll be in Firefox, sometimes um, just the terminal here. Basically, I strip off all the Chrome for the stream. I mean, the, the Chrome wouldn't add or detract, but it takes up space. So I just stripped the Chrome off. Uh, technically, I'm running Kitty on an OS X box with Tmux inside of it and so on and so forth. All right, there we go. Now in this case, we're going to need this here to be an MX stream. I've been thinking of switching to a, a BSD box actually. Some of those Ryzen CPUs. Now in this case, if we have an MX stream, it just has a public stream off of it. Oh, that's right, and we got rid of the uh, the is sum on this because it used to be a stream dropper. So how do we know if if the stream inside of this is still good? Did we get that uh, backwards? Is this supposed to still be a split? Oh, oh, hold on a sec. Let's go back to lib. I think it's something that we didn't quite wire up. Let's go to add stream. So in this case, we definitely wrap this thing. We get the stream dropper. And then the stream dropper is supposed to be added, not the stream. So here, try send that. We might be getting rid of MX stream again. Yeah. Now that stream dropper should be around a split stream, which is what ST is here. So we have ST. Put that into the stream dropper. Insert its control. Take the rest of it and pass it into the uh, the channel to be added. All right, now it's going to complain about the type there. So let's go fix that. So what do we have right here? We have a stream dropper, just with a T inside of it. No, 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 a stream dropper with a split stream with a T. Add stream to channel. Oh, there's two of them. Which one is it? I don't think it's a channel change one. this one because we were calling dot zero off of it oh good Expected stream dropper with split stream of T. Isn't that it? Good stream dropper here. Why does it not think that the split stream is there? That should be a split stream of T. That goes to this point. The 
the thing about like arguing with the Rust compiler is that you always lose. So when it says you got this wrong, you have it wrong. Where do we get this channel from? From our list of channels. Okay. Yeah, that should have been this one. Am I thinking about that backwards or something? Mismatch types, expected struct, stream dropper, split stream, bound struct, stream dropper of T. So the split stream is missing. Hmm. I'm gonna skip that and we'll come back to it in a moment. Though it's, it's, it's bugging me. I'm gonna move these here like a little quick mental bike shedding that stuff. Oops. I did one more. There we go. Valid. I'm gonna have to come back to it. Either that or something else is it's not being revealed here. Mismatch types, this is in channel. Could go fix channel for a moment. Oh, did I get this backwards? Is it a it's an MX stream of a split stream? Except it's still not that. It, this is a um, stream dropper. So I think we're still going to get rid of MX stream. Wire it for a moment. Mismatch types. This we can deal with. Yes.
Uh, this is for the add, process stream add. So in the library file, basically says, hey, th this channel, you need to take care of this stream. It passes half of it in. It takes the, the read half of the stream in. And when it does that, there should be a stream dropper of a split stream. Which is going to bubble up up here because our add rx is probably wrong. Yeah, and okay, we're going to just change this whole type. Let's simplify this for the future. All right. Mismatch types. Receiver. I missed one. Let's add some better type info here. Oh, it's the return type. It's complaining about the return type. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's, um, that's the other side of this. So in this case, Do we even need the stream ID? Because the stream ID is actually going to be embedded into the stream dropper. In that case, Somebody's going to send these things to us. So they are going to send read streams of T. Let's get rid of that tuple. As I don't think we need it anymore. Okay, that's going to cause chaos in the other file, but I think the reasoning's fine. Now the stream knows what it is.
that returns an option. Okay. Process stream add. Yeah, what do we do if if that option's a none? I guess it's possible, but highly unlikely. Because you could say, go and queue this and then drop it right away. This is one of those rust rust pieces where I try to decide is like I, I want to handle both halves of this. Right? The sum and the none. Should you go with the match? Or should you go with like the if else? Because it's either the stream is something and using the match you could de deconstruct it. The same thing with the if lot sum. Right? You, you could always have an else on that. I think we're going to go with the match. It's awesome logging in there. I think we have an idea on self. <laughs> so it's saying it found a struct that is a split stream with a split stream. That's great. How did we do that? <laughs> All right. So is the expected element correct? Stream future, with a stream dropper, and a split stream. Yes, that looks correct. So we're expecting that. But the dropper itself is incorrect. Dropper, where did you come from? From this add stream. Oh, no, I don't want that. Oh, I did this wrong. This should definitely be a if this is some, because we want the added stream to be pushed in there, not the dropper. Added stream, we technically do hold both of those. Clean up some of these comments. There we go. Oh, 
it was frame drop res issues? Oh, that's in the test stuff. That's okay. Nothing up above, though. Good. We'll come back to its test stuff. Okay, now back to lib. So when we go to add a channel, yes, we change the kind of this. We no longer take the we no longer take the stream ID because it's known in the stream dropper. That's right. So that type looks good. Next one, which function is this? Add stream. So the last one was add channel. This one's add stream. Mismatch types. Yes, we do not need that because the stream dropper has it. Is that then even used? It is. So we insert it there. Okay. Oh, it found T. That should have been a split stream. And that's where we came up to. Hmm. Okay, we're going to keep going. Let's skip that. Now process add channel. Where does this get called from? Is this? Yeah, when somebody's asking for more information. All right, we have to turn the interior machinery to make sure that that some of these other pieces actually work. The majority of the cases, it's going to be just pulling data off of the channel, right? But in the rare case, well, not so rare, but when somebody needs to actually go between channels and move between them, we just have these selects also working that machinery. So in that case, this process add channel gets invoked with the result of this um, MPMC channels next piece of data. So we got a channel change. We deconstruct the channel change on 202. Let's add a little bit more space there. We find the channel that we want to go into. We no longer have a zero on this, do we? Or is that a tuple? A zero doesn't exist there anymore, does it? I'm thinking of the wrong zero. Okay. Font? Here we are using a uh, Fira code. Now you know what? I might need to update that. Because I think we're actually using the nerd font variant of it. So if we come over here. Yeah, so you can see we got these little little bits up here, a little crab there. Look at that. It says rust all over it. And then if we go into like some other project that has maybe something else. You can see it's got some Python something or other in there. But yeah, I ended up using the Fiora Code nerd font so that all those extra little glyphs are possible.
The only downside is it's like a huge download. It's 70 megs. But the base is fear code. Using it inside of a terminal that supports ligatures. Was that the reason I went away from Alacrity? Did it not support ligatures? I don't think it did, did it? Two years now, wow. Very nice. Yeah, before this I was using uh, M1 Plus, which I really like, but it doesn't have the cool sort of development ligatures, which I also really like. That, like visually, it helps me to see what that operation is, as opposed to what's well, a hyphen greater than. Like, yeah, you you actually get symbols as opposed to um, just character spiel. All right, now in this case, what, what is it going on? Why is this? Channel change, what do you have in it? Split stream. Oh, when you get dropped, you come out of that. Oh, that's right. We need to create a new drop control and everything here. That's it. Now this insert isn't going to be quite right, is it? Just wrap it. Give it a new destination this st isn't correct this should just be a stream now we have our stream control that we insert with that stream id stream id is correct but this here should be a stream dropper that should already be a split stream to make sure that this is correct. That's a split stream right there. How does it not see that? I mean that that thing's a T. All these types and so many types. All right, so is it correct in that it should be expecting a stream dropper with a split stream of T? Yes, that is correct. Now, why did it not find the split stream of T? Let's move that up ahead. Now, this wrap. What are you taking? A split stream of T. What are you giving us back? A stream dropper of T. Ah. That, shouldn't that have been its own error?
So for this stream dropper, okay, let's go through the same exercise. It expected... Now this is for the TX. This is for the channel change TX. What is that? This is for us to be able to send this stream bundled with a little bit extra information to something so that it can actually put it into a different channel. So if we, have, we have the sender, channel change, split stream of T. Yeah, I, I believe that's correct. It needs to still have the split stream. We cannot get rid of the split stream. Match types again. Where does this stream come from? Oh, this is the one that's being passed in, right? So the whole job of, of Stream Dropper is to receive a signal, and when it receives a signal, it should get rid of its stream. It either drops it, or it tosses it into this channel change um, channel. <laughs> channel is so overloaded. I've been trying to figure out another name for it. Category? I, I keep using category when I try to explain this, so maybe that's a good, good way to go. Construct. Okay, so we are missing which piece in there. Oh, why is split stream doubled up? Expected struct, split stream, split stream. Found split stream. So it's expecting something wrong. This looks right to me. It's not like we wrapped it or anything. Well, that's so weird. Expected split stream, split stream T, found split stream T. And this is for a stream dropper. It has a T there, unless of course this this T is a stream dropper, wherever it's getting called from. Sometimes I've noticed in Rust that I'll get these errors that are actually coming from somewhere else, but are pointing in this location. So there's lib up there, okay. This type parameter, mismatch types. It's either. Okay, here's a different question. Should Stream Dropper know that? that it's T is a split stream. I don't think it should. So we'll just say it's generic. It's, you know, it's just T.
Then when we go to use it, we can say, hey, this is a split stream of tea instead of just a regular tea. Hey, Parms. Good morning. I'm doing well today. A little slow, I have to admit. I'm feeling a little sluggish today. The test stuff, I need to comment out. It's a little distracting. Tuesday evening. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hope you had a good Tuesday. Hunter 1818. And this channel change needs to be generic over T. back to a stream dropper okay so that's fine let's go back to lib now when we go to wrap this this t needs to be correct Yeah, in this case, that channel change there, it was here. Hold on, let's double check. Hey, Hunter 1818, thank you for the follow. And Wellhide, thank you. Is this the only one? And we have one down here too. And what is this? So when we add a stream, we have to give the stream dropper something to toss this stream into when we signal it. And the stream control will have a little button on it. We hit the big red button. The stream that's inside of the stream dropper goes into the into the tube. And that's the tube. Now, in this case, this channel change TX. Yeah, these two, this, this T is not the same. I think it's the same thing here. It's technically a split stream of T. Channel change. So it's a sender, channel change, split stream of T. Channel change, split stream. Why did it expect it with just T? That is so weird. 
Is it because of how we're actually constructing it? But we have the types here, right? That's... Oops. Did I take the D off that? I did. Those look good. All right, now this channel change bit, process add channel. And that's probably it then. Good. Oh, almost there. Make that mutable. Interesting. Change. Oh, this is unimplemented. Fine. Can we make that mutable? I guess so. All right. Now we're down to integration tests. Just a couple. Now, in this case, we've got lib, we've got stream dropper. Let's take a look at this dead code, channel change. Oh, that's not being used. That's true. And drop isn't being used. These are functions that will be called later. we were about to implement those and then things just kind of went sideways. All right, before we get too far, I get status. Add source. Uh, but not, not MX streams. We still are not using that. <laughs> we tried, we tried. But yeah, if you want to follow along, it's in um, GitHub Halsey Stream Multiplexer. I'm trying to come up with a better API on this thing. change. Now that we have the drop control, we can actually change channels. we don't have the channel we should just return this right away multiplexer error unknown channel
double check on the stream. I keep thinking about the stream IDs and thinking that I'm still using the old incrementer. Like what if it rolls around? But I don't think that's going to be an issue with the, the way that the slab works. But we do need some way to be able to remove these guys from the slab. Here we need, actually need to get a hold of the control. Set a marker here. That's going to be in stream control. So we just look that up. Is that the only thing that's not cloned in here? Or copy, I mean. Sorry. No, no, I did. I did mean clone, didn't I? Okay. Oh, dash map doesn't clone. Huh. That makes sense, actually. Channels are cloned. I imagine that the slab is probably okay. No, it's not. Huh. Alright, let's leave that off then. Okay, or else on there, and we'll have to transform that into multiplexer error. Some sort of like a unknown stream. mark on that. Say it's unimplemented. Ah, stream does not exist. change channel and give it the channel ID. Been working up to that. Yeah, that'll signal and get it re-enqueued. 
I think that's it there. Return OK, and we're done. What about drop channel? We did add stream. Change stream channel. We did that. We did this one. We didn't do remove stream. Let's toss remove stream in there. Welcome Raiders, we're working on Stream Multiplexer again, um, this time without an embedded runtime. So we'll have to see where, where the little cracks in its armor are, but so far it's going pretty well. I'm going to put this next to that. You're basically rusty now. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, Musian has been uh, an amazing mentor on this on this stream. Um, goodness, for a very long time—nine months, ten months, almost—and I highly recommend checking out uh, Musian's channel. Assumption of looking. <laughs> oh my goodness, running one test. Hello world, this is a test. Wow, <laughs> that is a cool, that is, I am amazed that you're actually implementing the whole uh, span system. That has to be one of the greatest things about the rust errors, knowing exactly where these little pieces came from. API for that. Oh, you've got to be kidding. That's it. That's it. That is so nice. So clean. And then attach info flags. Nice. Get to the source file, and you, and you render it, and it just works. That is nice. Apex plays. Good morning. This is really nice. And you've had me thinking about that, that entire, oh goodness, capturing terminal output as images. That seems like it should be a solved problem. And just being able to you know, have something where you say you know, dump to image or something, right? Run this and capture the output. Would be, would be amazing. 
And I did switch to spaceship, although that other terminal window isn't there. And I love the little crab. And it is fast. Spaceship is very, very quick. I think the crab's actually made up of two characters. Is there like a left crab and a right crab? Record row. Expand. Expected ident. Missing expression. And record row. Oh, wow. That, that's just parsing fields in a struct. Just marks the whole row as a span for the new type. So it grows in span. Oh, wow. That's really nice. Now this record row, when you say record here, um, that's like a synonymous to a struct, isn't it? I mean, you, you did say it was a struct, but pressing fields and struct looks like. When I think record, I think Erlang. I imagine it's similar in Haskell. Does Haskell have records? Nice. Expect identifier. Maybe expect this. Missing expression in a row. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, I see. They have data types, which is a higher kind of type over a record. Gotcha. So what comes next in your language? Precedence parsing. Collaboration inference. I see. No precedence for Matthew. What is elaboration to inference? I'm not familiar with that. I mean, precedence parsing, every coder's seen that. But I'm not sure what elaboration inference is in a compiler.
Oh, okay. Inference is type inference. Assigning types. Finding types and assigning them. I see. Do you have a name for your language? USML or UNSML? <laughs> Small S M L. Micro small. And how do you say S M L? Is it do they say it like small? Or is it S M L? Because I know and like M L everybody refers to M L as M L. A standard ML. Mm. <laughs> the tender to sound. <laughs> That's great. That's funny. Oh, what did I do there? Oh, I had multi vim still on. Um, so we need to pull that out of these elements here. Do they have a remove in that slab? One last example of the browser. Yeah, let's take a look. Copy link address. If while, we've got to be kidding. Like this is, so simple. Wow. To parse the expression, I see. So in this case, you have an if, parse the expression, then else. Now, is it always the case that uh, then has to exist? Because if, if then doesn't exist, does it fail? So it does have to exist. It's an expression. Okay. I'm not that familiar with ML or standard ML. While expression. Do expression. <laughs> nice. This is so concise. This is easy to read. Wouldn't be irrefutable like in Rust, I see. Hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh, this is clean. This is really clean. Do you have it in a repo yet? It'd be fun to take a look through it.
I wonder if that can make it need to... Hmm. I don't know. I'll have to think about that. I actually need to look at this lab interface at the moment. I had a question for you the other day. What was it? Oh, we were trying to wrap. You know how they have like a, an async dupe? You can wrap a um, something that implements um, async read and write inside of an arc, and then the arc also implements that. We were trying to do that for stream, and it just failed horribly. And my mouse was lagging there. It's not exactly clear whether they even truly exist. It has two commits at the moment. <laughs> Tuple record matching parsing. So A comma B and then A da da da. I see. Bring that up. Tuple pattern. Left paren. Maybe bump. Oh, I see R paren. Do they use the clean star for uh, matching like that? What do they use the clean star for? Comma, expect maybe, right for end. Man, this is cool. This is like so, so clean. Oh, you can't overload operators. I see. This is nice. I know I keep saying that, but it's true. I mean, to be able to kind of express this and have built up all these other little types and to know ahead of time, right, multiple steps ahead that you're going to need these things and to be building them out like that. It looks like you've done this before. <laughs> like you have experience making languages like this. calls parse token um that's nice good afternoon Pedro Pomen oh I see that's being clever <laughs> gotcha Um, basically out oh I see the vector from clean start could have zero or one, one or more elements
but maybe removes the sole element from the vector if it exists. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. Then you just use a little either map, a little either, and map one of the sides so it matches the other side and factor. Just unwraps it if they both match. Hmm. Oh, I see. Nice. Do I deliberately mislead all of you? I wouldn't do that. You haven't bothered? You don't meet the requirements. Man, I, I don't even know what the requirements are. Oh, oh. That, that's because I haven't added that to my list yet of things to do but while I am while I'm setting up the stream I need to add that to like a list I do go back and update it I noticed that I got the last two days wrong I was off by a day <laughs> Oh, that you have to be an affiliate. I don't know. I wonder why. Because I, I know you don't want to really be an affiliate. Yeah. The little hat is funny. Alright, let's close that. <laughs> Give a mission to my dog. Uh, yes. Get. What is that return? Is that an option? Should be an option. It's just a hash map. Wow. 
I butchered that. If let's um control is equal to that, then control drop. I'm tired of getting one back. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> Give me a box. Yeah, the E2. the other one it's e squared yes all right uh yeah i see i see although it, it's educational for you know coders to see how how development happens i think young coders don't always see the the progression that's why they should they should be watching your channel Seems a little weak here. There's some like edge cases. What if something is actually going between channels as you try to remove it? <laughs> Tina Box was easier to type. <laughs> As for the dupe thing for the stream, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, we we ended up just using um, split from futures for it. That next produces a new state. Yeah, I know, I know the, the way I wanted to use it, I would only ever have one reader, but it would make it easier to move it between channels because I, I could just drop it and clone the source, you know, put the source in a new channel. Instead of piping it, I have to like, okay, move it around and have it go between the different channels. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't going to use it that way. It was just to be able to, uh, to call next on it, even though there was only ever going to be one. Well, no, I guess that's not true. There would be some source, and I would never call next on that one element. You're right. Yeah, a uh, good point.
I wonder if there's a way to know whether or not this is actually. So if we remove the sink, does that close the other half? I don't think it does, does it? So we really have to do both of them. The problem is that the stream controller is a little window down here somewhere. Or it might be enqueued for something. And it comes out and it gets wrapped again. So at this point, we have to make sure that it doesn't get wrapped back up and tossed back in because then we'll just have only half a stream is sitting around. Does slab have that? We could treat slab as the source of truth. Contains. Yeah, they changed the V4 on this. So you can remove, you can take. Remove is kind of a lazy one. It's like a rough counted one. You just start uh, dropping roughs. And take, on the other hand, will wait for it by spending until the currently outstanding references are released. Expected to be dropped soon. I mean, maybe we do go with the take option. That way, we we have control over it. Because at this point, we should probably check that the slab still has that stream of that ID, and if it doesn't, we don't add this again. So if it still contains it, we're going to bundle that up and toss it in there. Otherwise, we're just dropping it. Because at this point, we're, we cannot give the entire thing back, like the whole thing. We only have half of it at this point. I guess we could actually. We could give it to some. We could give it to Drop. If Drop has, like, we could give a a one shot to Drop and have it give this thing back. But I don't think we actually need to.
that and is the order correct? So if we take it from the stream, that'll signal that this thing is gone from the system, even if it's going between elements, between channels. I don't think what we're gonna do at the moment. I think we should we should kick the wheels on this thing. Ooh, how do we do that? Got all these little pieces. Let's toss some unit tests on some of the smaller pieces first. We've got stream dropper. We've got error. Oh, that's right. We've got error. And channel. Let's just start with channel. So we should be able to add something to this that that implements TriStream and read from it. Okay. I'm not using Futures Light, unfortunately. Uh, Futures Light doesn't have uh, Futures in ordered. At least last I checked, it didn't. Oh, I see, it doesn't have any of the alloc features. Yeah. Okay. Before we get too far into that, cargo build. Actually build. Oh, you moved Twitch over to using it. Compile faster? Wow. Nice. I was even thinking of getting rid of... Um, of actually stamping out these errors here, just writing these all out longhand, because now I know what I want it to be, or closer to what I want it to be. Just one moment. Oh, 
Well, I've been surprised. It turns out that it's actually a... Um, I need to take a break for a little bit. So I'm going to take 10. And I'm going to see if I can clone this real quick. Um, Actually, set this up. Um, give me a sec. Break time. Do that. And that tools. All right. We're gonna go to that. I will be back. Um, just taking a quick break. So, see you in a couple. Back in a few.
All right, and we are back. I'm going to uh, get the door and we'll get going again. All right. Well, that was a that was a surprise. Um, my uh, my darling beloved uh, wanted to have breakfast earlier today, so it was breakfast in the office. I don't know if that's going to be a regular thing, but if it is, I think we might be able to reuse that uh, break time thing. I should have called it breakfast, huh? Ah, whatever. You get the idea. Um, So yeah, actually right now I'm enjoying coffee. I don't usually get to do during a stream. Just cheers. Oh, that's good stuff. All right. No Tokyo for anything else. Still haven't finished it for the next release. Okay. Event listers and maybe. Okay. Oh, interesting. I like how you've separated these these bits out. That's nice. How do you like Pin Project Light? Oh, sorry, I had the mute backwards there. Taking a sip of coffee. way to pin a field to a struct. Interesting. Oh. Huh. Take a look at that. Oh, I see. So you can actually have portions of it that are pinned. I see. Nice. Yeah, we've got that... What was that? That was in uh, Stream Dropper? So in that case, if it was pinned to the stream here, or to self, or a stream is. So in this case, I could toss that on stream dropper in the stream, and then I wouldn't have to have the unpinned types.
Hey, good morning, Nightshade dude. How are ya? Oh, wow. Ooh, look at that. I don't know why, but I just like that. <laughs> it's so clean. I like seeing that. No features, no optional dependencies. Hey, Krasnick. How's it going? And Shershak55, good morning. The end. And that's, that's, I'm guessing that's most of what people actually need. I'm trying to solve one thing. Pro tip, don't make coffee. Put creamer in it. Walk away and forget about it. The fat will rise to the top and it go pee from... Oh. <laughs> it's moving to PPL from PP. Yeah, project's going pretty well, uh, I have to say. It's nice. Oh, that's a control. We want stream dropper struck there. No, in this case, we are going to pin project, project, pin project. And then we just mark the one that we want pinned. Oh, this is great. Most of Tokyo won't need seen either. Oh, wow. You can't have it unpinned now because that wouldn't make sense. Oh, yes. Um, probably. Actually, why is it whining? Let's see. Oh, unpin, I see. There it is. Does that mean we can get rid of that? Can we just call pull next? Right, and we should have that on there now. Oh, I see. 
Not there. Got it. Got it. Got it. Would it make sense to only to do it in here? Because this is the only place where we're going to be using that. I see. I see. So we do have to unwrap. Okay, nice. Um, so we call. Oh, keyboard's a little, a little funky today. Project that out, and then we have off of this these other elements. Shouldn't matter at all. Okay. I see. So maybe. So if it doesn't have that on there, let's go ahead and move that in touch. Actually, I don't. Don't quite understand. Projects the fields out. Okay, so no methods. Got it. I see. So that doesn't implement those methods. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> I guess I could move this in. Let me read this again. So because I have these extra field, these uh, member functions, this might not be a good use case for this. Yes, is, is that true? Oh, that was more of a question. I phrased it poorly. Because I really do want the stream ID on there. Those are okay. It's a view struct. I get that. So the only thing that we're really missing is whether or not we could probably do without this function. I get that. No, you can use it with member functions. Just the fields will be on this. Gotcha. I see. So, I see, I see. All right. We can do without that. This is the one that does a bit of work. That in here, it does it in two places. We do this off of self.
Build up yourself logic first and then project out and call the pinned methods later. I see. So here we project out. It's not working on this one though. Let's see. Do we need to? Um, actually, it doesn't need to be as mutable, does it? But we do need the expect. I thought they said in their documentation this dot pinned is like so, which is exactly what we want. Oh, that option is a problem? Oh, I see. That makes sense, of course. that and I put it on the wrong thing. It's really the stream that we want that on. They have an as pin mutable? Really? Oh, wow. All right, so let me wrap my head around this. Now, so this is basically what we have, and we have to be able to call it. That's pin mutable. Mistake. As pin mutable. Do we need to ex? Wow, I didn't even know that as pin mutable existed. When did those land? 1.33, wow. Repinable references, pinable. Okay. That's neat. That's really neat. When pin landed? Oh, is that when, uh, also, let's see. Async await was. Was that about the same time? Or async await happened after that, after 33. I don't remember, was it? It seems like it would have been like 33 to 36, 37. 39 seems way too high. Was it 4-1? 4-1 was last November? I remember that, it was... Future was 136. I see, and we're on 145 right now. So six weeks times four? Huh. Seems like it's gotta be earlier than, than 41. Cause I thought, I thought async landed early in my streaming adventure here. Oh, 
Okay, 39. That, that feels closer. this debug does it has to be inside okay now self isn't the same thing anymore we can pass that in So seldom do this in Rust. Oh, I thought I was highlighting those, like multivimming those. Now that stream is, I see it's trying to actually use that. No, we don't need to do that. This dot stream should refer to the pinned stream up here, that option. Expected one argument found zero take. It's because it's inside of a pen, isn't it? Documentation goes in the macro too. I see. Hmm. That's good to know. Oh, it's actually using. Oh, that's interesting. It's it's using the uh, async read ext take in that case. I see. Let, let's finish passing that in. starting to get it now. Oh, this one here, self. Hmm. Invalid position of rename. I'm 
I'm always a little cautious because sometimes I don't. There's a little bit of magic in the first argument not having a type and being called self. Because the alternative is like that, and, and that has the a different sort of type. Right? And eliting that type, I think, has led to a little bit of confusion. I, I get that it's a lot less typing. I see, so all of those are allowed to be called self. And any combination, oh wow. Now, in this case, we have that and if we want to have, we want to reach inside of the pen in order to drop that, I guess we, wait, are we in the middle of self? Standard lib. There's a little bit of a lag there. Let me rust up doc. Oh, so much better. My local documentation going again. And if you didn't know, when you install Rust via RustHub, you end up getting a lot of documentation. The edition guide, the Rust seed book, cargo book, Rust doc, all this stuff. Normal spec, the Nomicon, unstable book. So much stuff is here. It's just available. All the searching works, all this stuff. There's an RFC for arbitrary self types. Oh, interesting your own smart pointer for self. Hmm. Interesting, this map. This should return a mutable T, which is supposed to be self. And we have stream off of that, don't we? No, no, we don't. Actually, we want to call project here, don't we? Oh, that's better. Okay.
All right, and then we get back to option. Take the stream out of it. Hey, Game Dev Unknown, how are you? So if we've taken this out of that option, now this is a little weird, but so in this case we have a stream, it's an option. T is unpinable for that method. Now, do we have to call unpin on that? Into enter. Oh, give me a ball unpin it. see so instead of calling well I guess we still have that in the option so we get it out of the option here so at this point this is a well, this is pin whatever the stream is right probably T Yeah, at this point we have ownership because we've taken it out of the option. Oh, wrong, wrong, wrong. Uh, change channel here. Take, unwrap, into, enter. Nixiative. Good morning. How's it going? Oh, the underscore will work there. Huh. So at this point, we should be able to take and unwrap that. Now, I know the type is wrong then, because at this point it should just be wherever T is, right? Oh, I got that backwards. Oh, I didn't, I didn't see that. Ah, yes, there it is.
Yeah, it might be on something inside of it. That makes sense. Okay. Now, what... What went wrong here? Here we have a as pin mutable. This would have returned that element. So maybe we don't call that there. Maybe it's still self.stream at this point. <laughs> it's better if you know, right? confident in these two lines here. I think we want to do something that's more along these lines. Files it ships. Yes. Uh, game dev unknown. Yes, we are currently working on stream multiplexer. And I guess more accurately, we're working on a certain branch of it. Simplify. That's over there. Let the CDN AB test it for you. <laughs> All right, so self.stream in this case is pin. We're going to do a pin into inner on that. Now, what does that actually return? Is, is it an option? No, it can't be an option. It's a pin option instead. What is this? Found enum option T, okay. I'm definitely expecting an option here too. Why is that an option of T? Self test stream. You were thinking, so we're going to online stuff for my game? Oh. Uh, at the moment, we're actually working on... Uh, technically, this is this is going to be used by the game server. <laughs> Russ has a smart pointer-like box called P. <laughs> what? On 82... You're not using the unwrapped one. Now what is stream in this case? Okay. Found T. Is 
Is it Vim? It's Neo Vim. Yeah, Neo Vim with um, a Conqueror of Completion. Wait, wait. So in that case, if that is just T and not Option T, oh, uh, because we still want to be able to take it out of the option. Yeah, that that's interesting. Why would it unpin that? Gee. Huh. Because the goal here is actually to take it out of the option, and if that if it does that, then I can't actually take it out of the option. We don't always want to take it out, though. We only want to take it out if... Oh, I guess we always do want to take it out, don't we? Ooh, touche. Okay. I have good eyes. Ah, here we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh. Yes? No? option to a pin. Okay. And it is some pin option T D ref magic. Uh, it should be projected here on line 80. Okay, now in this case, it says it's a... See, now it thinks it's a pin again. Now, why is it expecting pin, pin up? What? That is strange. What does take return? An option to T. So it should just be a pin for that. Let's ensure this is actually T there. Okay. Because of the left hand side? <laughs> Does this need to let's see found struct immutable T? And it I thought that isn't that what it mm, into enter. Ah, it doesn't want to exclusive borrow, of course. Is it Tmux I'm using for the terminal tabs? Yes, that is Tmux at the bottom. It's Tmux using a, actually the same theme. I think I'm just using the, the Tmux configs from the Challenger Deep theme. You'd have it, option T, let unpinned T equals, give me another take on
All right, so unpin T, which is going to be a stream. I'm going to replace the line just above it. Just a moment. It's going to be this dot okay, mutable. Expected semicolon where oh should be equal to and you can take that option to pull the sum t out. Oh get mutable on the pin, thank you. Well that I guess that's a pin there because stream should be uh, projected to that. And we have this uh, stream which this here should be the pin. What IDE am I using? I'm using a NeoVim with COC and a COC Rust Analyzer. Then we call get mutable on this, called take, but it actually thinks that we're still trying to take using the other element. Oh, it's private. On wait, that's on channel. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Don't care about that error. Don't care about the that one there. Stream dropper, eighty-two. Yeah, it's must just be Rust Analyzer then. Okay. That is so weird. Let's give us some in, uh, type info in this case. Um, There we go. Thank you. Oh, people said the the release today fixed it. That's nice. Yeah, because it was probably doing what that deref to find that that take. So it skipped over the the outermost one. Hmm. Which means, in this case, it's just stream. It's going to be something or nothing. Ah, uh, should we be doing the unwrap, though? Option pin, pin, option T. Yeah, that. Come on, there we go, Vim fingers. All right. There we go. Now, why is it an option to a pin of pin of option of T? It should be T after they unwrap. Got yeah, double pin option T. this should be option of T. Okay. It believes me. That means we do not need that or that.
Remove that comment, drop the stream, or take the stream, uh, whatever. In this case, we need T itself to be unpinned. Okay. Oh, I think I passed it. There it is. Oh wow, okay. Oh, that was fun. That was really fun. So we did that in order to avoid I'm trying to find it. Basically having to unpin, oh, well, so that this, this stream element here that didn't need to be unpinned. That is very cool. That's very, very cool. I've got a meeting at 15. I have to get prepared for. Um, hmm. So I think I'd also like to do this, not just with stream dropper. The MX stream is gone. This is gone. Um, channel doesn't quite do the same thing. Yeah, we just had unpinned stuff in there. We do call next. Yeah, and that's just on the features on ordered. Okay. That is very helpful. Oh. We'll stay with Tokyo for now. Yeah, apparently, like in uh, pre-async await, I guess this was the way of doing it, right? You would you would end up having to implement future or implement stream in order to wire everything together. Oh, I I never really coded during that, but ended up having to go through and. I guess the previous version of Stream Multiplexer, I got a little deep into that stuff. But pinning is still something that I struggle with. It'll take a little little while. And I understand that it's just holding its place in memory. Right, be the stack or the heap.
and that makes sense to me like when you have something like this big async machinery right like you have this giant state machine and you're just slowly churning going through all the all the motions you need to know that something hasn't moved when you come back to that that place of execution You only need it if you're wrapping future streams with your own type. Makes sense. That is really, really neat. I like that. Are you going to be streaming any more today, uh, Musian? I'd be happy to raid you. Was your second stream today? Oh goodness! <laughs> Let's give this a push. In case anybody's falling the line on that. All right. You meant to do it during your command to PNG adventure. Yeah, I, I keep looking at that and thinking that there needs to be a solution for that in Rust. And it seems like most of the machinery is there. A lot of TTY crates are there, all the PNG stuff. There's even a font rendering system that's available. So I wonder how much more is actually needed. And what would the interface look like? Would we just like give it a command, say, do this, and you just capture everything, right? Basically run that. Um, capturing all of the, uh, the I.O. between it and, and the shell. And then just render something at, at the very end. Copy link address on that. We're going to get. Oh, shoot. That's a really quick countdown. I wanted the 60 second one. Well, until next time, y'all. Bye bye. Oh, no, no. I, got, I guess I got time. I got, to, got a little bit of time. That's fine. Okay. So I misunderstood the little UI thing. I forget that. Oh, interesting. Then they have it. Okay. And then they implement this here. Project this. Oh my goodness, that is so clean. You have reached the voice mailbox of Kino. Wow. I see. That's really nice. left I'm going to take a look but until next time y'all thank you bye bye